were looking for theirs but found someone else's. The Osvik family used a metal detector to search for a lost earring on the island of Tromferland, located off the southeast coast of Norway. Under one large tree, the device showed the presence of metal. After digging, the family found two bronze pieces of jewelry that archaeologists later identified as brooches. One of them is oval, most likely it secured the straps of a woman's outfit. The other, round brooch, was more difficult to identify. The jewelry was engraved with animals and geometric patterns. Experts believe they were previously plated with gold based on traces found on the object. The find indicate that an aristocratic Viking woman was buried at the site some 1,200 years ago. Tomb of Cerberus a remarkably well-preserved tomb was recently discovered in the Giuliano area of Campania near Naples during archaeological excavations ahead of the modernization of the city's water supply system. The entrance to the tomb was sealed with a tough slab. The ancient Roman tomb is approximately 2,000 years old. Inside the chamber, there are a huge number of amazing frescoes on the walls. The image of a three-headed dog Cerberus especially stands out, which is why the tomb was nicknamed Tomb of Cerberus. This mythical creature is known as the Hound of Hades. He guarded the entrance to the underworld and prevented the souls of the dead from leaving. The fresco shows the moment when Hercules, completing his twelve labors, kidnapped Cerberus. The walls also depict mythical scenes with ichthyocentaurs, creatures whose upper body resembles a man and whose lower body resembles a horse with a fish tail. Ancient Dice Research at the Celtic settlement in Sambarovese, Silesia, has yielded a unique find – a 2,000-year-old dice, the oldest found in Poland to date. The Celts inhabited regions of modern southern Poland, including the Glibchip Plateau, from the 4th to the 2nd century BC. Archaeological excavations in this area have been ongoing for 11 years. The most interesting find of this year was a dice found in the semi-underground building. The dice is made of bone or horn. Archaeologist Soida says that although such dice are known mainly from settlements in Lower Austria, Bohemia and Moravia, they are rare in Samborovitsi. Several years ago, plain chips were found there. A well-preserved iron fibula, a decorative clasp, was also discovered. This unique find is in excellent condition thanks to the protective layer formed when it was exposed to fire. Each year, finds reveal more about the life of the Celts in this region. Cave with Primeval Ancient Forest in China, researchers have discovered a striking object, a giant karst pit, inside which is hidden an ancient forest, unlike any known so far. This geological phenomena is located in Li County, Zhuangxi Zhuang. Many similar pits have been found in the area, but the size of this one defies the imagination. This pit has a volume of 5 million cubic meters, its depth is 192 meters, length 306 meters and width 150 meters. However, the real miracle is hidden inside. Descending to the bottom, a group of speleologists discovered a stunning forest with ancient trees up to 40 meters high. These trees are surrounded by dense undergrowth, almost as tall as a man, indicating a unique ecosystem. Experts from the Institute of Karst Geology believe that plants unknown to science may grow here. This site provides a unique opportunity to study the ancient world and possibly hidden life forms. This ancient forest in a giant karst hole in China is a real mystery to science. Scientists from all over the world are all ready to come for research, possibly discovering new species of plants and animals. Once the research is complete, perhaps the site will be open to tourism, allowing us to see this amazing piece of nature in person. 8 Secret Rooms in the Pyramid Experts from the Julius Maximilian University of Würzburg, working on the restoration of the Sakura Pyramid, discovered eight previously unexplored rooms. This pyramid, built approximately 4,400 years ago, is the tomb of the Egyptian pharaoh Sahur of the 5th dynasty. Although the site was explored in the 19th and 20th centuries, ongoing work has led to new discoveries. The main task of the researchers was to strengthen the foundation of the pyramid to prevent its further destruction. Thanks to 3D laser scanning technology, detailed plans of the pyramid including its interior were drawn up. 
As a result of the research, a secret corridor was discovered leading to previously unknown rooms. The condition of these premises raises a number of questions, including regarding their original content. After the discovery of new rooms, restoration work began. Scientists intend to continue studying the pyramid in search of additional discoveries. They believe future discoveries could revise our understanding of the history and architecture of the pyramid. An absolute rarity in 2022, archaeologists discovered a unique item in a woman's grave, an iron folding chair. After restoration, it was shown to everyone. The find was made in the village of Anzi, Germany, during the excavation of a burial site from the 7th century. The grave contained the remains of a woman aged 40-50 and a number of artifacts including a multicolored necklace and brooches. A male burial with luxurious weapons was found nearby, indicating Frankish influence in those days. The restored folding chair was was presented at the conference Archaeology in Bavaria. It consists of two parts connected by an axis and is decorated with brass decorations. The pillars show traces of seed fastenings, probably made of fur. Such chairs are rare in burials. The find indicates the high social status of the deceased. In Europe, only 29 graves with similar chairs are known, and only six of them are made of iron. Professor Matthias Fiel expressed delight at the find, emphasizing its historical value. He noted its importance for understanding the social-cultural aspects of the early Middle Ages. This cheer is a testament to the rich history hidden beneath the earth. Carved Snake Head Tenochtitlan, the ancient center of Mexico City, was once the heart of the Triple Alliance and had between 200,000 and 400,000 inhabitants. However, the arrival of the Spaniards led to mass death from smallpox. Now, centuries later, an amazing find has been discovered in the city center – an Aztec snake head measuring 1.8 by 1 meter. Due to the characteristics of the soil, many details of the artifact were preserved. The researchers were amazed to see that 80% of the carbons were still covered in bright pigments – ochre, red, blue, black and white. This is a reflection of how Mexicans decorated their temples and religious images. To preserve rare pigments, scientists use a special chamber, the work in which will last until 2024. This artifact reminds us of the greatness of the ancient Aztecs and allows us to see a world full of bright colors and finest art. This discovery connects us to the culture and history of Tenochtitlan and adds new pieces to the mosaic of human history. The discovery of the Aztec snake shows how much remains to be learned about ancient civilizations. Buried Catapult Archaeologists in England have discovered a unique technical miracle – an experimental catapult for launching bombers into the atmosphere. A Ray Mark III catapult was discovered in the southeast of England in Oxfordshire. Created between 1938 and 1940, it was designed to save fuel and reduce the need for long runways during war. In 1941, it was mothballed, and the regular runway was built on top. Despite its short career, the catapult played a key role in the development of ejection mechanisms. The main idea was to launch aircraft from ships, which provided a strategic advantage during the war. The catapult was excavated at the Garwell Science Campus, where researchers saw its internal structure, a huge circular pit with a turntable on top. The plane was heading to one of two short runways, only 82 meters long, which is several times less than modern standards. The bombers were launched using an underground pneumatic mechanism powered by 12 Rolls-Royce Castrol aircraft engines. However, the catapult did not live up to expectations. It did not meet bomber requirements and did not perform as planned. After the war, the site was used to store radioactive waste. An additional takeoff point and artillery installation were also found on the territory. For a detailed analysis, scientists created a 3D model of the catapult. The Ray Mark III catapult is a clear indication of the technological progress of the time. Despite its failure, it became a stepping stone in the development of ejection systems during World War II. Unique Antique Key an archaeological team has discovered a stunning artifact near Claverham, North Somerset, UK. A majestic medieval key with an extraordinary design that acts as a portal to the past. Excavations were carried out nearby the 19th century manor of Cordovic. Researchers discovered walls that were likely part of the main building. In the area of one of the walls, dating from the post medieval era, a key with a complex pattern was found. This item is identified as a turning key used to turn and unlock locks, originally 
made from wood in ancient Babylon and Egypt. Roman craftsmen made significant improvements in the production of keys, making them more compact and durable. Its design and dimensions are similar to the London Type 6 keys, but smaller in size. It is unclear what object this key belonged to, but its discovery provides new insight into medieval art and craftsmanship. America was discovered 7,000 years earlier. The authors of a new study from the University of Bournemouth in the UK presented evidence indicating that the first people settled North America not 14,000 but at least 23,000 years ago. This date was identified based on the analysis of ancient human traces and fossilized plants. Until recently, it was believed the appearance of humans on the continent occurred through a quarter formed due to the melting of ice 14,000 years ago. Scientists claim that at the beginning of the 21st century, hypotheses about an earlier settlement of the continent appeared. Radiocarbon dating of seeds found alongside human footprints has been criticized. It was argued that the seeds could have absorbed old salty water, which would have skewed the dating results. To disprove this theory, the researchers used flow cytometry, a technique commonly used to analyze human cells. This method allowed scientists to isolate and study individual particles of vegetation. The second method, optically stimulated luminescence, also confirmed the antiquity of the traces, based on dating the grains of ancient plants. Thus, new methods of analysis confirm the previous conclusions of scientists, indicating that the history of the first inhabitants of North America requires revision. Ancient Trident in Turkey in northwestern Turkey, near the historical city of Assos, archaeologists discovered an amazing artifact, a trident dating back to the 3rd, 4th century AD. Professor Nuritin Arslan, who leads the research team, considers this trident to be evidence of ancient fishing traditions. Such iron objects are usually subject to corrosion and destruction, but this artifact is surprisingly well preserved. This speaks of the skill of its creators and the peculiarities of the conditions in which it was located for centuries. The trident was found near the Nymphin, an ancient and magnificent fountain decorated with reliefs and statues. Based on the location of the find, it can be assumed that the trident could have belonged to a fisherman from Assos who used it to catch large fish. Ancient fishermen probably lit the night sea with torches to attract fish and then caught with tridents like these. This fishing method, fishing method, was often depicted in ancient reliefs and frescoes. In addition, traces of ancient iron smelting workshops were previously found in Assos. This gives reason to believe that the trident was made here. The city of Assos has a rich history that dates back to the 7th century BC. It was founded by colonists from the island of Lesbos and became an important cultural and commercial center in ancient times. Aztec Death Whistle at archaeological excavations in Mexico in the late 90s of the last century, parts of Aztec whistles made in the shape of skulls were discovered. According to scientists, these whistles were sounded in rituals dedicated to the god Quetzalcoatl. Modern technologies, such as a 3D printer, have allowed specialists to recreate this unique item, and its sound, according to experts, resembles an eerie howl, combining the noise of the wind and the groans of many souls. There are several hypotheses regarding the purpose of this tool. One version says that the whistle helped the souls of the deceased pass into the world of the dead. The second involves its use as a protection against evil spirits in the grave. Finally, the third option sees it as a psychological tool on the battlefield that destroys the enemy's morale. It should be noted that the shape of the whistle reproduces the anatomical structure of the larynx. An interesting point, a terrifying sound is perceived even scarier when the source is not visible. Radioactive men Stories of scientific experiments are often creepy. One of these dark pages of history is associated with the codename Cal-1. Under this designation lies the tragic fate of Albert Stevens. In 1945, 59-year-old Stevens came to a San Francisco hospital complaining of abdominal pain. The doctors diagnosed him with liver cancer. However, the diagnosis turned out to be erroneous, and Stevens was not told about this. His case interested researchers who needed a volunteer for experiments with plutonium, discovered in 1941. Without Stevens' permission, under the guise of a vitamin injection, he was given a lethal dose of plutonium. This step was part of an experimental program aimed at studying the effects of radiation on humans. 
Over the ensuing decades, Stevens underwent regular medical examinations, unaware of the presence of a radioactive substance in his body. Despite receiving a lethal dose of radiation, he lived for another 20 years. In 1975, after Stevens' death, his remains were examined in a scientific laboratory but were never re returned for burial. This story serves as a reminder of the dark places in scientific research and the ethical boundaries that must not be crossed. And you can just imagine how many such terrifying experiments are taking place these days that we don't even know about. A cocktail of hallucinogens and human blood Analysis of an ancient vessel dating back to around the 2nd century BC revealed traces of an unusual cocktail consisting of various hallucinogenic plants, alcohol, honey, and human body fluids. Scientists believe that this strong drink was used in religious rites dedicated to the deity Bess, a figure resembling a combination of a dwarf and a cat who was credited with protective properties in ancient Egypt. The peculiarity of the vessel lies in its design. It is made in the shape of Bess's head. Scientists suggest that due to the protective significance of the figure of Bess, a drink from such a vessel could be considered as healing. Tests of organic matter in the container at the Tampa Museum of Art revealed the presence of the plant Paganum hamala and the water lily Nymphaea cerulea. In addition, the drink contained alcohol made from fermented fruits, honey, and possibly royal jelly from bees. The presence of human proteins has also been noted, which may indicate the addition of breast milk, mucus fluids, or human blood. Sarcophagus of a woman with special status In the city of Reims in France, archaeologists made a unique discovery. An ancient sarcophagus from the Roman Empire dating back to the 2nd century AD. According to experts, its owner was a woman of high social status. The sarcophagus, made of solid limestone, was carefully protected by eight iron locks and hidden under a heavy stone slab weighing 770 kilograms. To examine the contents without damaging the relic, the researchers used x-rays and endoscopy. Thus, they discovered a human skeleton surrounded by funerary accessories. Inside the sarcophagus was a woman who died at the age of 40. Buried with her were personal items intended for life in the afterlife, a miniature mirror, a ring with a number stone, a comb, as well as oil lamps and bottles, possibly with fragrant oils. The sarcophagus was discovered in the vast area of the ancient necropolis of Reims, located along seven major roads connecting the city with other Roman settlements, including Lutetia, today's Paris, and Lugdunum, today's Lyon. More than 5,000 burials were found in this area, but most of them were looted and many artifacts destroyed during the First World War. The discovery of this sarcophagus is a real find, as it is the first fully preserved object of its kind in this Gallo-Roman city. Scientists hope that DNA analysis from this tomb will reveal more about its owner, perhaps revealing the secrets of her origins and social status. 18th Century Ice Bath under the meeting halls of the English town of Bath, archaeologists have found a unique ice bath from the 18th century. This rare find may be one of a kind and is becoming a key focus for scientific research. Ice baths have been used for centuries for their therapeutic properties. Even the ancient Romans enjoyed the coolness in the Frigidarium. In the 18th century, doctors also recommended them as a method of treating various diseases. At this time in England, meeting halls served as entertainment centers, especially especially in resort places like Bath. Although cold baths were popular in private residences, the discovered bath was presumably intended for those seeking a more refined and private way to relax. The bathtub itself is installed in the central part of the three rooms located below the bathroom and is surrounded by wardrobes. The construction of the meeting halls dates back to 1771, and guidebooks from that era already mentioned the cold bath, changing rooms, and game rooms. These records directed scientists to the trace of of the ancient structure, although they did not have an exact idea of its appearance until the moment of discovery. 5,000-year-old wine a team of scientists from the University of Vienna, led by archaeologist Christian Köhler, is exploring the burial ground of Queen Merit Neith in Abydos. 
the greatest ruler around the 31st century BC. Recent discoveries highlight its important role in history. Archaeologists have discovered 5,000-year-old wine and many other funerary objects. These discoveries confirm that Merit Neith was the first female pharaoh, preceding the famous Hatshepsut. What makes Merit Neith special is that she had a unique monumental tomb in the first royal necropolis of Abydos. The mystery of her identity has not yet been solved. During the excavations, many funerary objects were found, including hundreds of beautifully preserved wine jugs. Some of them are still sealed and contain ancient wine. Inscriptions indicate that Merit Neith controlled key government bodies such as the treasury, confirming her exceptional place in history. The queen's funerary complex at Abydos, consisting of the graves of 41 courtiers and her tomb, was built of mud brick, clay and wood. Research has shown that construction was carried out gradually over a long period of time. Devil's Tracks on the night of February 89, 1855, mysterious hoofprints appeared in the snow of Devon. They could be seen on rooftops, fields, and narrow streets from up to 100 miles away. The journey of the tracks was not interrupted even in front of obstacles in the form of walls or rivers. Many believed that these were traces of Satan himself. These tracks, also known as Devil's Hoofs, left behind an inexplicable path. The prints resembled those of a donkey, but their placement suggested a bipedal creature. Each track was about 8 cm wide and about 10 cm long, and the distance between them was from 20 to 40 cm. The tracks extended throughout the Devon region, including the access estuary area. One of the most unusual aspects was that the tracks appeared out of nowhere and then disappeared. Sometimes they paused at a pile of hay to resume on the other side. In the Times newspaper of February 16, 1885, 55, these marks were called Satan's prints. Many quickly linked the phenomenon to the Prince of Darkness, especially when footprints appeared on doorsteps and around churches. Some people believed the tracks were fake. Some considered possible sources of traces of cats, hares, mice, and badgers. However, no animal could leave marks on the roof. Of course, there were aliens. Some associated the tracks with UFOs or sea monsters. Scientist Mike Dash suggested that there could be different reasons behind the tracks. However, the exact origin of the tracks still remains unknown. Some continue to believe that it was Satan who wandered Davin on the fateful night in 1855. What do you think about this? Write your opinion in the comments. Toothbrush from the time of Frederick the Great in Potsdam, the capital of Brandenburg, researchers have discovered traces of early modern industrial activity, including the remains of three mills that operated from the mid-17th to the mid-19th centuries. These mills were associated with a noble estate and his territory, the first carriage depot in Germany, appeared in 1838. This depot served to service the first Prussian railway line between Berlin and Potsdam. Later, its area increased significantly. The depot existed for more than one 150 years and closed in 1999. Now the territory is intended for the creation of an innovation center. According to Christoph Krauskopf from the Office for the Protection of Monuments, there is a map from 1863 that shows the mills. In addition to the foundations, the researchers found details of the water supply system from the New River. Other finds included fragments of tiles with the monograms of Prussian monarchs, shards of ceramics, clay whistles, and wooden toothbrush. The oldest shipyard in the world. On the island of Dana, off the coast of the Turkish province of Mersin, the ruins of an ancient giant shipyard were discovered. With large amounts of iron ore and cedar, the island in the Cilician region has been a key center of trade and politics since the Bronze Age. 296 boathouses from different eras were found on the territory, which indicates the possibility of simultaneous construction up to 300 warships. Ships were also maintained and repaired here. Most of the boathouses are carved out of rock and are classified according to their unique features. Some of them are only partially preserved due to destruction, and behind them, structures possibly for service boats have been discovered. Some of the boathouses collapsed into the sea due to earthquakes. Falcon Temple with a Mysterious Message 
In Berenice, Egypt's ancient port city, archaeologists have discovered an ancient falcon temple that has them baffled by headless birds, unknown deities, and a mysterious inscription, heads are not to be boiled here. The excavations, which are more than 1,700 years old, revealed 15 headless falcons on a pedestal and a stone monument depicting two unknown gods. An iron harpoon, 34 centimeters long, was found next to the pedestal. In another part of the temple, a stele was discovered with a Greek inscription that reads, Hats cannot be boiled here. It is not clear why the falcons were beheaded, why a stele with such an inscription was in the temple, and why the harpoon was placed near the falcons. A stele depicts three deities, Harpocrates of Coptus, the child deity, and two mysterious gods whose names are unknown. One with the head of falcon, the other a goddess wearing a crown with cow horns and a solar disk. It is likely that the headless falcons were sacrifices to these gods, in particular to the falcon-headed god. Remains of fish, mammals, and eggshells were also found in the temple. The temple shows that ancient religious practices continued even after the advent of Christianity. At that time, Christianity was the state religion of the Roman Empire. The beheaded falcons and the ban on boiling heads raised many questions about cults and beliefs in Berenice. Mummified Crocodiles In the new study published this year in PLOS One, scientists from Belgium and Spain reveal an unusual technique for mummifying crocodiles in the Egyptian village of Kabat al Hava around the 5th century BC. Crocodiles had a special place in Egyptian culture. They were associated with the deity Sabak, served as a source of nutrition, and their components were used in medicine. Although mummified crocodiles are often found in excavations, they are rarely analyzed in detail. This time, the researchers decided to conduct such an analysis on 10 mummies from Kabat al Hawa. Researchers have determined that the mummies are two types of crocodiles, ranging in size from 1.5 to 3.5 meters. A feature of these mummies is the absence of resin or bitumen in their composition, which indicates the process of drying in hot sand before burial. This method was typical until the Ptolemaic era, when resin began to be actively used. Some mummies were found to contain pieces of flax and palm leaves used after the bodies dried. Treasure of the Cloud People The ancient Mixtecs built one of the most powerful empires in Mesoamerica, reigning from 1500 BC before the Spanish invasion in 1523. It was their unique heritage that interested scientists from the National Institute of Anthropology and History of Mexico when they excavated ancient graves in the hills of San Juan Excoaquisla in the state of Puebla. These people, also called the Cloud People, created many iconic settlements, including Tulantongo and Achitla, and maintained their culture even under the yoke of the Aztec Empire. They skillfully resisted both the Aztecs and the first Spanish conquistadors, which adds heroism to the story of their resistance. The unexpected discovery was made in the heart of the city, where construction revealed barrels with chambers containing the remains of at least 20 people and accompanying artifacts from the classical Mesoamerican era. The finds include 150 pottery vessels, elaborate bone artifacts, a unique axe, and ceremonial yokes that may have been used in ancient games. The found graves tell us about the burial traditions of those times, indicating the important role of rituals and possible family or trade connections of the period. This is the third such discovery in the city square, which confirms the presence of an extensive necropolis here. Ancient Tumor with Teeth during archaeological excavations in Amarna, Egypt, scientists made an amazing discovery. In one of the tombs, dating back around 1340 BC, they found the skeleton of a young woman aged 1820, wrapped in a material made from plant fibers. Although tomb number 3051 was located in a cemetery for common people, the woman apparently belonged to the wealthier strata of society, which indicates the presence of gold rings on her hands. Particular attention was drawn to the ring with the image of the deity Bas, who guarded the hearth and women. However, the most surprising discovery was a bone mass with teeth found in the pelvic area of the skeleton. This formation, the researchers suggest, is an ovarian teratoma, a tumor containing tissue that is unusual for a given location, such as hair, bones, or teeth. Perhaps the amulet with the image of the demon was worn by a woman to relieve pain associated with ovarian disease. This discovery is especially valuable since teratomas are extremely rare 
rare in archaeological finds. This find is the oldest of, of all known similar tumors. Research on the Amarna woman suggests that she was an active participant in the social life of the city, which was the capital of Egypt during the reign of Akhenaten. Mesopotamian Clay Bowls The clay bowls, more than five and a half thousand years old, are still shrouded in mystery. These artifacts, ranging in size from golf balls to baseballs, were found at Chogamish in western Iran in the late 1960s. In total, about 150 such bowls were discovered, which only increases intrigue around their purpose. For a long time, the prevailing theory was that the bowls were used as a kind of means of recording economic transactions. This assumption was based on the discovery of a 3,300-year-old bowl containing 49 stones and cuneiform writing describing a deal with a shepherd. However, the exact function of these bowls remain a mystery. In 2013, using computed tomography and 3D modeling, scientists took a look inside the bowls. It turned out that they contained tokens of various shapes, which could serve as numerical signs for recording goods. Researchers are trying to understand the system of which these tokens are grouped within the bowls. One of the surprising finds indicates that some tokens were wrapped in cloth and placed in a bowl, then coated with a liquid similar to bitumen. Some bowls had tiny channels, perhaps for thin threads, that could serve as external markers and provide information about the contents. Similar objects have been found in various cultures of the time, including Scotland, where more than 400 carved stone bowls from the Neolithic period have been discovered. What else do you think these mysterious artifacts could symbolize? Leave your guesses in the comments! Tomb of the Royal Scribe in Abuser, Egypt, Czech Egyptologists made an important discovery. They found the tomb of a young royal scribe, which is approximately two and a half thousand years old. This find, along with other archaeological discoveries in the region, gives scientists a better understanding of the changes that took place in Egypt in the 5th and 6th centuries BC. The tomb belonged to a certain Jehutihad, who lived during the Persian invasion of Egypt. Only the underground shaft of the tomb has survived, at the bottom of which, at a depth of 14 meters, there was a chamber tomb built from limestone blocks. Inside is a stone sarcophagus with relief decorations, hieroglyphs, and images of ancient Egyptian gods. According to Ladislav Beas of the Czech Institute of Egyptology, the tomb was decorated in the traditional style of the time for important persons, although Jehutihat himself was only a mid-ranking official. The inscriptions on the walls were intended to facilitate his path to the afterlife and ensure eternal bliss. They contained mostly religious texts the names of his parents and specific wording including spells to ward off snakes. However, despite the magical tax, the tomb of Jehutihad was almost empty when open, having been plundered around the 5th century AD. The era when the tomb was built was a time of decline of civilization and social upheaval. Examination of the remains showed that Jehutihad died at about 25 years old and already showed signs of severe osteoporosis and spinal wear, possibly due to an occupational disease. 100,000 Ancient Coins in Meibeshi, Japan, archaeologists have discovered a unique find. Over 100,000 ancient coins, including Chinese Banlian coins dating back to 175 BC. These coins, found during the construction of the factory, cover the period from the 7th to the 13th centuries. They were tied into bundles of 100 pieces using sashi straw ropes. This site, close to the ruins of a Ken dynasty palace, was chosen to hide the treasure, probably because of the approaching war. A total a total of 1,060 Sasha bundles were found, some of which contained up to 1,000 coins. Analysis of 334 coins from the hoard revealed 44 different types of currency, spanning the period from the Western Han Dynasty to the Southern Song Dynasty. The earliest Banlian coin has a diameter of 2.3 cm, a square hole in the center, and a thickness of a 1 mm. The latest coin dates from 1265, indicating that the treasure was hidden during the Kamakura reign. Mysterious Gold Foil Figures During road construction work at Wingrom, near Lillehammer, the remains of an ancient temple containing rare gold artifacts were discovered. These gold objects date back to the era of the Merovingians, who ruled in the 5th 8th centuries in the territory of modern France, Belgium, parts of Germany, and Switzerland. 
The total number of gold objects found reached 35. Despite their small size, these square coins surprised with their detailed execution. On them you can see images of people in luxurious outfits. Archaeologists from the Norwegian Museum of Cultural History claim that the coins were made of extremely thin gold sheet on which detailed figures are depicted. Some of the images may represent the god Frey and his wife Gerd from North mythology. These artifacts were likely used in religious ceremonies or as temple money. Despite their incredible detail, these coins do not have holes, indicating that they were not used as jewelry. Stone with a human face in 1872, a mysterious artifact was discovered, which still does not give exact answers about its origin. When Seneca Lad of Meredith decided to fence off his property, workers found a strange object in the clay. Made from dark quartzite and shaped like an egg, this stone features a human face and symbols such as wigwam and arrows. Many speculated that the item was created by Native Americans. In 1931, a theory arose that it could be the Celtic Thunderstone, a mythical object that supposedly falls from the heavens. In the past, such stones found on the earth were considered signs from the gods or the elements. The artifact is now in a museum where visitors can see it in person. However, its real history and purpose still remain unknown. What do you think? What is the real history of this item? Ancient Roman Refrigerator Archaeologists from the University of Warsaw, excavating a Roman military settlement in modern Bulgaria, found an ancient analogue of a refrigerator. This artifact was discovered in Novaya, a 1st century AD fortress located near the Danube River. Researchers studied the settlement's water supply and discovered the first water well, as well as a system of aqueducts made of ceramics and lead. Next to the lead pipe, archaeologists found a box made of ceramic slabs. According to scientists, its location and materials helped cool food. Food. This is the second such refrigerator found during recent excavations. Inside it, fragments of dishes, bowls, and animal bones were found. These refrigerators date back to the late civil period. A 4th century fireplace, well preserved wine vessels, and a silver pendant in the shape of a mouse were also found at the excavation site. Novaea was found by the troops of Augustus around 45 AD to suppress the uprising of Thrace and played a key role in the Second Dacian Campaign of Trajan. Over time, the the settlement was rebuilt from stone and became a civil city. Today, Novaya is open to the public. Polish and Bulgarian archaeologists have been excavating there since the mid-1960s. Book of the Dead and Royal Burials Tuna El Gabal was once the cemetery of Man or Hermopolis Magna and is the most significant Greco-Roman necropolis in Egypt, with a history dating back to the New Kingdom and continuing into the Roman era. The Egyptian Ministry of Tourism and Antiquities has announced a recent discovery, a New Kingdom cemetery in Tuna El Gabal. Led by Dr. Mustafa Vaziri, a team of archaeologists eliminated the secrets of this amazing site. They discovered many rock-cut tombs containing stone and wooden sarcophagi. Major finds include funerary amulets, precious stones, gold items, and ushapti, figurines depicting influential officials including Jehu Times, responsible for the bulls of the Temple of Amon and Nani, the singer of Ammon. The artifacts reflect the status and beliefs of the New Kingdom elite. An interesting find was a papyrus about 13-15 meters long associated with the Book of the Dead, an ancient Egyptian funerary text. This document includes magical spells aimed at helping the deceased on their way to the other world. Why clean the dragon's hole? According to ancient Chinese beliefs, every morning the emperor, upon waking up, had to clean his dragon hole. But why did this ritual cause such a stir among palace mates and imperial concubines? Why were they willing to bribe to gain the right to serve the emperor? The legend tells of a farmer who lived in the far corners of China. One day by the pond, he saw his sleeping wife and a huge dragon who was guarding her. Suddenly the sky darkened, lightning flashed and thunder sounded. Month later, Later, their son was born and went on to become Emperor Gaoju, founder of the Han Dynasty. Since then, the dragon has become a symbol of imperial power and the emperor himself received the name dragon. In ancient China, each part of the emperor's body was associated with the body parts of the cosmic dragon. His mouth, known as the dragon's hole, required special care. In the morning, his dragon hole was rinsed with a decoction of green tea since toothpaste and brushes did not exist at that time. They brushed their teeth with their fingers and the rich used decoctions of herbs and sea salt. 
Every morning, the emperor was served a cup of green tea, not for drinking, but for rinsing. This ritual was so important that the maids and concubines would do anything to bring this cup of tea to the emperor. But why? Reason number one. Closeness to the emperor as a chance to change their life. The women who served the emperor were distinguished by their beauty, intelligence, and health. Proximity to their ruler gave them the opportunity to attract his attention. From a simple servant, one of them could become his concubine and radically change her life. If a concubine managed to provide the emperor with an heir, her status in the palace could increase significantly. Many of these concubines who lived in the Forbidden City did not even see the emperor and did not have the chance to bear him a child. Reason number two. The value of imperial objects. The rare tea leaves used to prepare the emperor's decoction were worth their weight in gold. These leaves, collected as tribute, once used, were transformed into a high-quality product. A lucky maid could take the remaining tea, resell it, and receive a payment for it comparable to her many months of earnings. Faces on Stone a drought in the Brazilian region has caused water levels in the Amazon River to reach record lows, leading to the discovery of faces and other figures engraved on ancient stone that is more than 2,000 years old. These petroglyphs, including images of animals and other natural forms, were found on the banks of the Rio Negro at an archaeological site known as Ponto das Slages, Place of the Slabs. Researchers estimate that the paintings are between 1,000 and 2,000 years old. The stones, in addition to images of faces, and water also have grooves indicating that the site was used to create stone tools. Archaeologists discovered 25 groups of engravings on one rock. The find indicates that this place was used for sharpening various tools. In addition, fragments of ceramics were found at this site. Although Ponto das Slages is recognized as an archaeological site, the petroglyphs have not yet been studied. What other secrets do you think Amazon is hiding? Share your thoughts in the comments. The oldest knives made from shark teeth. On the Indonesian island of Sulawesi, archaeologists have found two tiger shark teeth turned into knives that are about 7,000 years old. This find provides evidence of the ancient use of shark teeth as weapons. Before this, the oldest specimens discovered were 2,000 years younger. These dental blades are associated with the mysterious Tolian culture, ancient hunter-gatherers who lived on the island long before the arrival of Neolithic farmers. The teeth, about 2 meters long, have special holes indicating their attachment to the handle. According to scientists, these blades may have been used in rituals or battles. While shark teeth may seem like an unusual choice for a weapon, ancient cultures used what was available. These knives were sharp, but their blades could quickly become dull. Ancient people around the world used shark teeth for cultural purposes, turning them into weapons or even tattoo tools. This showed their respect for these marine predators. Lost History a long-awaited fragment of the famous Dead Sea Scrolls, dating back 2,700 years, was recently found. These scrolls are parts of ancient manuscripts discovered near the Dead Sea between 1946 and 1956, including 972 documents in various ancient languages. Moreover, a third of them contain biblical texts, the rest are extra-biblical dating back to the era of the Second Temple. Interestingly, one of the three rare fragments dating from the First Temple period, which was was considered lost, was discovered in the U.S. state of Montana. The owner of this ancient artifact said that his mother purchased the papyrus as a souvenir in Jerusalem in 1965. This fragment is of interest to scholars because it contains only four lines in Hebrew, starting with the words, they went to Ishmael. Researchers suggest that this was an instruction to the addressee. The name Ishmael in biblical history is associated with the firstborn of Abraham and his maid Hagar and is quite popular. After a detailed analysis, experts confirmed the authenticity of the scroll and its age. Now this historical artifact is in Israel in the Antiquities Authority. However, many such scrolls are still hidden in private collections around the world. Medieval Era Sword in Salo, Finland, in August, while laying a pipe near a medieval stone church, a local landowner discovered an iron object that turned out to be a sword. It was handed over to archaeologists. The sword was dated to 1050 
1150 AD, during the Crusades when Sweden brought Christianity to Finland. It had a curved blade, a straight handle, and a triangular oval head. Parts of a scabbard, blade fragments, iron items, and human remains were found in the same area. Further research revealed the presence of a burial structure and confirmed the existence of a large cemetery with dozens or even hundreds of graves. These are the only confirmed late Iron Age burials in the region. Interestingly, the funeral was conducted according to Christian customs. Ancient Cosmetics an amazing discovery was recently made in the depth of Turkish Anatolia. Archaeologists have found the remains of ancient cosmetics and various jewelry dating back more than 2,000 years. Apparently, this place was once a market where the main products were cosmetics and accessories for women. What's particularly interesting is that most of the finds appear to never even been used, indicating a commercial purpose. Objects discovered include fragrance bottles and makeup pigments, predominantly pink and red, reflecting in the fashion trends of ancient Rome. Archaeologists have announced the discovery of previously undiscovered cosmetic products which may be blush or eyeshadow similar to modern ones. In addition, shells intended for storing cosmetics were also found. 7,800-year-old figurine in the west of the Turkish province of Izmir, in the Ilukuk Mount, archaeologists made an impressive discovery. They managed to find a clay figurine of a female figure, which is about 7,800 years old. Professor Oslem Chevik, who is leading the excavations, emphasized the importance of this site as the first settlement of farmers in the region. This mound is one of the most ancient settlements in western Anatolia. Archaeologists have discovered artifacts here that are 8,850 years old. For many generations, people lived here, building villages one after another. One impressive artifact was a clay figurine of a woman found in recent excavations. Researchers have previously found such figurines, but many of them were broken. This is the third figurine found in perfect condition. There is an assumption that these figurines are images of gods. However, some were found in landfills, making this theory less likely. Perhaps the figurines were used in various rituals associated with important life moments, such as the birth of a child child or the harvest. The Lost Jewels of Tutankhamun Opened in 1922, the tomb of Tutankhamun amazed with its incredible artifacts. However, many of them have disappeared. They say that some of the pharaoh's valuables may have been removed by Howard Carter, who led the excavations. At a recent conference in Luxor, Egyptologist Marc Gabal from the French University Paul Valéry presented the results of his research. Based on photographs from the 1920s, he compared the artifacts to museum pieces and auction lots. One example is Tutankhamun's magnificent collar which is now fragmented and scattered around the world. Gabal claims that part of it are in the Nelson Atkins Museum in the United States. Additionally, beads from this color were recycled into a necklace that was unsuccessfully attempted to be sold in 2015. Other finds include beads from a pharaoh's headdress at the St. Louis Museum and jewelry at the British Museum. Another earthenware color was previously in the New York subway, but returned to Egypt in 2011. According to this investigation, it it can be argued that archaeologist Howard Carter stole these items. Documents indicate that he gave something to Surgeon Berkeley Moynihan. Earthen Pillars This unique landscape amazes with its beauty and unusualness. Depending on the time of a day and lighting, the earthen pillars of Renan in Italy change their shades, which makes them even more mysterious and magical. At first glance, it's hard to believe that what you're looking at is not a movie set or an image of another planet, but a real earthly landscape created by nature without human intervention. For many travelers and photographers, the Renan earthen pillars became a real discovery. They attract with their unusualness an amazing history of formation. This landscape reminds us of the grandeur and mystery of nature, of how landscapes can change under the influence of time, water, and wind. Every year, the number of tourists wanting to see this attraction increases. Some come here to enjoy the scenery, others to learn more about the formation processes of such unusual structures. 2-meter statue of a man with a penis 
In the southeast of Turkey, in the area of two ancient monumental complexes of the pre-ceramic Neolithic era, Göbekli Tipe and Karahan Tipe, archaeologists have made amazing finds. A statue of a wild boar was discovered at Göbekli Tipe, painted in three colors – red, white and black. This monumental image is installed on a pedestal decorated with signs – the letter H, a crescent symbol, images of two snakes and three faces or masks. In the Karahan Tipe, researchers discovered a statue more than two meters high depicting a man in an atypical pose, as well as a sculpture similar to a vulture. These discoveries were presented by the Turkish Ministry of Culture and Tourism. Statues and other artifacts were also discovered there, including a structure with pillars shaped like phalluses and a stone head of a man. This complex, according to some assumptions, may be even more ancient than Gebekli Tipe. Brewers of the Wari Culture the ancient Wari culture, which predates the Incan civilization, flourished in the Andes mountains of Peru for hundreds of years. Particularly noteworthy is the fact revealed by research from the University of Florida and the Field Museum in 2005. Wari brewers were women, and not ordinary workers, but representatives of the upper class, distinguished by their extraordinary beauty. These talented women brewed chicha, a traditional alcoholic drink made from corn and the fruit of the Peruvian pepper tree, which dates back a thousand years. Scandinavian Code Solved Jonas Nordby, a researcher at the University of Oslo, has deciphered an ancient Scandinavian cipher from the 12th to 13th centuries known as Jotunvelo, roughly translated as Confusion of Giants. The answer was found thanks to a 13th century wooden stick from the Norwegian city of Bergen, on which Sigurd and Laverance wrote down their names both in ordinary runic writing and using the Jotunvelo cipher. This find became a kind of Rosetta Stone for the scientists, helping to decipher the text by reading each rune not by its direct meaning, but by the last sound in its name. In addition, other wooden inscriptions were discovered, where the names Thorstein and Einar were written in the same code. Runic six of the 12th-13th centuries in Scandinavia were used to transmit messages, reminiscent of modern SMS. Nordby believes that Jotunvelur could be used not so much for secrecy, but as a language game, helping to teach lit literacy. So the 800-year-old code called Jotunvelur turned out to be a joke. The message read, kiss me. Rare Bronze Age Tool During excavations for a gas pipeline in a small town of Este, northern Italy, archaeologists discovered a 3,300-year-old wooden yoke dating back to the late Bronze Age. The area is famous for its archaeological finds, but no Bronze Age settlement has been found here before. The yoke, used to fasten oxen around the neck with straps, offers a glimpse into the deep past, demonstrating the size of the oxen of that time. They were smaller than modern ones. An interesting trace of repair in the yoke indicates that in ancient times it was repaired after a breakdown. The marshy terrain during the Bronze Age contributed to the preservation of wooden objects, as people built their homes on stilts above the water. This created conditions for long-term conservation of organic materials. The finds are carefully studied at the Roman Institute of Restoration. Although the discovery of the yoke is an important step, archaeologists continue to explore, awaiting new discoveries. This artifact suggests how much more is in the earth and reminds us that human history is many fragments of one big picture. City of the Era of the Legendary King Hammurabi at Tel Muhammad in Iraq, an international team of archaeologists has discovered the remains of an ancient fortress. These ruins date back to the era of Hammurabi, the famous Babylonian ruler who became famous for his code of laws. New finds indicate that the city was abandoned after the fall of Babylon to the Hittite king Marsilius I in 1595 BC. This conclusion is supported by historical texts found at the excavation site. The researchers focused on studying the northeastern part of the city, where, following descriptions of ancient texts, they discovered the remains of a fortress wall, a canal, and a potential port near the Tigris River. Scientists believe that canal may have been part of a complex sewer system created using terracotta pipes to quickly drain wastewater. Archaeologists also discovered a staircase to the high terrace on which the tower stood, and a nearby cistern, which originally served to collect water but was later converted into drainage. Within the city, 
tables, structures related to grain processing and bread preparation were found. Of particular interest are the furnaces used to liquefy the bitumen in the sacred bathroom with altar. Nearby were tombs associated with ancestor worship, referred to in ancient texts as kispim. Other finds include cylinder seals for administrative purposes, decorated with images of the era and loads of terracotta items from the 2nd millennium BC. Colorful Egyptian Tomb the Egyptian deserts continue to reveal the secrets of an ancient civilization famous for its majestic pyramids. Egypt's Ministry of Antiquities recently unveiled a well-preserved tomb over 4,000 years old. The tomb is attributed to a high official named Hovi from the 5th dynasty. This monument is part of the extensive necropolis at Saqqara, south of Cairo. The tomb has a special shape. An L-shaped corridor leads to a spacious hall with paintings depicting Hovi at a table with sacrificial offerings. Some designs retain the vibrant colors associated with royalty. Archaeologists are trying to understand the relationship between Hovi and Pharaoh Jekher SSC, whose pyramid is located nearby. One theory is that they could be related. The mummified remains of Hovi and broken canopic jars, vessels for organs, were also found in the tomb. Sculpture of a Winged Deity in northern Iraq, archaeologists made an amazing discovery. A statue of the wind deity Lamassu. Despite the passage of centuries and its majestic size, the sculpture remained almost intact. This 2,700-year-old alabaster monument represents Lamassu, a deity with a human head, the body of a bull or lion, and bird wings, who lost his head. However, it was restored. The head is already on display at the Iraqi Museum in Baghdad. Custom officers seized it from smugglers in the 19th 90s. French archaeologist Pascal Badelin, who led the excavations, noted the importance of this find, comparing its size with monuments in Egypt and Cambodia. The weight of the statue is 18 tons and its dimensions are 3.8 by 3.9 meters. This grand, centuries-old artifact once stood at the entrance to the ancient city of Dor Sharking. It is known that it was ordered to be installed during the reign of King Sargon II in order to protect the capital of Assyria. Interesting fact, the statue was meant in documents of the 19th century, but then disappeared from the attention of scientists for many years. Residents of the local village of Korsabad eventually hid the rest of the statue to protect it from destruction. 120 Horse Skeletons in China, archaeologists have discovered the ruins of an ancient fortified city of Yaoyan, which arose during the Bronze Age. This city, which once served as an important political and cultural hub, hid palaces, sacrificial recesses, ditches, and many other buildings. In particular, scientists discovered six special pits in which the skeletons of horses were found, neatly laid in layers. Mysteriously, some of these skeletons were dismembered. According to research, the animals were most likely divided into parts before being buried. In total, about 120 horse skeletons were found, including foals. This practice demonstrates the high status and prosperity of the city during those times, highlighting the importance of horses in the region. The researchers also encountered a Western Zhou-era bronze casting site, containing the remains of a specific clay mixture used to create various building shapes and foundations. Other finds include a variety of artifacts, ceramic objects, stone jewelry, lacquerware, as well as celadon and bone vessels carved with symbols reminiscent of Chinese characters. Medieval Prosthetic Hand during archaeological work, a skeleton with a rare iron prosthetic arm was found near Freising in Bavaria. This amazing process dates back to the late Middle Ages or early modern period and was discovered near the parish church of St. George. The find was sent to Munich for detailed study. The prosthesis was intended for the left hand, missing four fingers. Apparently, it was covered in leather and contained a soft padding at the base, and the fingers were made of non-ferrous metal. Although such prostheses were rare, about 50 examples of similar products have been discovered in Central Europe. These ancient prosthetics demonstrate the attempts of doctors of the time to help people who had lost limbs, especially amid numerous military conflicts such as the Thirty Years' War. One of the most famous prosthetics was created for Götz von Berlichingen, a knight who lost his arm in 1504. His story inspired Goethe to write a play. Both of Goethe's prostheses have survived and are now in the family castle in Baden-Württemberg. Obsidian Mirror 
ancient civilizations in Mexico used obsidian mirrors, or tascatils, as divination tools. Looking into the depth of the mirror, the sorcerers were transported to the world of gods and ancestors. Obsidian mirrors can be seen as a metaphor for the images of ancient Mexican monuments. They reflect not only the object, but also the person looking. The main accessory of the supreme Aztec god Tichetlipoca is an obsidian mirror. His name translates to smoke and mirror. He is often depicted with a mirror on his chest, wearing jewelry, or in place of his right leg. Tichetlipoca was the ruler of the night and its creatures, primarily the jaguar, which, according to beliefs, could move between the earthly and underground worlds. In 1969, American artist Robert Smithson visited Mayan ruins, following the path of writer John Lloyd Stevens. Despite traveling through Mayan territory, Smithson claimed to embody Teshetlipoca. This experience inspired him to create a piece of art in which he used mirrors to illustrate time travel. In the early 20th century in Mexico City, Augustus Jenin, a Mexican collector of French origin, amassed an extensive collection of pre-Columbian artifacts. Ancient Mexican mirrors from his collection survive to this day in various shapes and sizes. Sometimes they were reused, inserted into Christian crosses or as symbols of vanity. Real Fragments of the Book of the Dead in the 19th century, Sir Thomas Phillips, a British collector, dreamed of becoming the owner of all the books on the planet. He amassed a collection of 60,000 manuscripts and 50,000 books. Among them were 19 fragments of the Book of the Dead. For many years, his heirs plundered and sold the library at auctions. In the 1970s, these relics passed to Hans Krauss, a prominent New York bookseller. In 1983, Krauss and his wife donated the fragments to the Galtim Museum in Los Angeles, where they were hidden from humanity for many years. Only recently, the museum decided to show the public seven fragments of these artifacts. The Book of the Dead is not your average book. This is a collection of 200 prayers and spells designed to help the souls of the departed in their journey through the afterlife. It was a kind of ancient guide for the soul. Despite the name, the ancient Egyptians paid more attention to live in life in an attempt to curb their fears of death. The goal of the deceased was to reach a paradise world reminiscent of his native Egypt and unite with the deities participating in the eternal cycle of rebirth. Only the upper echelons of society could afford to have a Book of the Dead with personalized spells. At the exhibition, visitors could see scrolls belonging to temple priestesses named Asad and Ankenesinesid, as well as strips of linen with spells for mummification. Particular attention is drawn to the court hall scene, where the scales decide the fate of the deceased. If the heart of the deceased is light, he goes to heaven. If it is heavy, eternal autumn awaits him. Ancient Buildings from Pre-Columbian Times the ancient secrets of the Amazon continue to unfold before us, despite their centuries-old mysteries. Modern technological methods are beginning to reveal the extent of the ancient civilizations that once existed in this place. Using modern LIDAR technology, which uses light to measure distance, researchers Vinicius Piripato and Luis Arago, in collaboration with photographer Diego Gurgel, made a startling discovery. They were able to discover over 20 earthworks created by ancient indigenous people, which until then had gone unnoticed. But this is just the tip of the iceberg. Scientists suggest that there may be another 10,000 to 24,000 similar structures hidden in the depth of the forest. According to research from Brazil's National Institute of Space Research, indigenous people have inhabited the Amazon basin for more than 12,000 years. However, the full extent of their presence and interaction with nature has not yet been studied. Diego Gurgel, who took aerial photographs, helped reveal stunning geoglyphs huge geometric shapes buried in the forest. Useless mask for 4.2 million euros a couple from Montpellier, France, decided to tidy up their home in 2021 and accidentally discovered an antique mask. Deciding to get rid of it, they offered it to an antique dealer for 150 euros. It was later discovered that the mask was a valuable piece of the 19th century African art used by the Fangs of Gabon. There are only a few such masks in the world. At auction, it was sold for 4.2 million euros. Having learned about the value of the item, the couple decided to file a claim against the 
antique dealer, accusing him of withholding information. They demanded more than 5 million euros from him. On the other hand, documents show that the antique dealer, initially unaware of the cost of the mask, decided to consult auction houses, where its price was estimated at only 600 euros. The antique dealer, not believing the specialist from the auction house, decided to conduct a radiocarbon study, which confirmed its historical value. Later, the mask was put up for auction and sold for the mentioned amount. The family claimed that the antique dealer bribed their gardener to learn more about the origins of the mask. They also said that the antique dealer offered them a compromise of $315,000, but they refused following the advice of their children. The court of first instance ruled in favor of the antique dealer, but the case is still being considered by the appellate court. The current situation remains unclear, but funds from the sale of the mask have been temporarily seized. Who do you think is right in this situation? A couple who sold a mask for 150 euros or an antique dealer who made a fortune from it? Write your opinion in the comments. Bright paint of the Parthenon marble. For centuries, the Parthenon marbles in the British Museum sparkled bright white. But like many sculptures praised for their simplicity, these works were once, were once brightly colored. Previously, there were no traces of paint on the two and a half thousand year old sculptures. Now, scientists have found many remaining traces of dyes. The researchers analyzed the sculptures using a luminescent imaging technique developed by Giovanni Veri. This method recognizes traces of Egyptian blue, an artificial pigment. The team found Egyptian blue on 11 sculptures and one figure. This pigment is present on the belt of the goddess Iris, on the legs of another figure, and on the crests of the waves from which the god Helios emerges. They also found traces of white and purple pigments. A detailed examination of the sculptures showed that the craftsmen carefully conveyed textures such as leather or wool. The discovered traces of pigment showed that some of the sculptures were of very high quality and richly painted. Such research helps historians better understand ancient art. This proves that the ancient world was more complex than we thought. Mummy covered with gold. Archaeologists have discovered a 4,300 year old mummy completely wrapped in gold near the Sep pyramids. It may be the oldest ever found. The man who was named Hekaships was found in a limestone sarcophagus at a depth of 15 meters. In addition, archaeologists have found magnificent life size statues depicting servants, men, women, and families. All these finds date back to the period of the 5th and 6th dynasties and were found 30 kilometers south of Cairo. They are expected to help attract tourists to the region. The excavations were carried out on the territory of Saqqara, which is part of the huge necropolis of the ancient capital of Egypt, Memphis. The famous pyramids of Giza and other pyramids at Abu Sur, Dashur, and Abu Ruvaish are located here. The region was recognized as a UNESCO World Heritage Site in the 1970s. Two wells were discovered at the excavation site. One of them contained the remains of Hekka ships and the second led to three more tombs and numerous statues. In one of them rested Mary, the keeper of secrets who worked at the court of the ancient pharaoh and had access to extremely valuable documents. Mary knew the art of writing in a society where the majority were illiterate. In another well, they found wooden statues and a number of amulets as well as statues of the god Ptah Soka. The stage where Shakespeare performed at St. George's Town Hall in Norfolk, England, archaeologists have discovered a unique 15th-century wooden stage. According to experts, it was on this stage that the great playwright William Shakespeare could have performed. Medieval oak floorboards were found under two layers of later flooring. The uppermost one was laid in the 1950s and the lower one in the 18th-19th centuries. These 15th-century boards are notable for the fact that they were secured not with metal, but with wooden pegs, which is typical for medieval buildings. Laboratory analysis using Denver chronology showed that the boards dated between 1417 and 1430. Despite being a century before Shakespeare's birth, St. George's Town Hall is one of the oldest and best preserved medieval buildings in England. The town hall was originally built by the Guild of St. George in the early 15th century and was used for religious services. But by 1445, it had become a venue for theatrical performances. In 1593, London's theaters were closed due to the the plague, Shakespeare's troupe performed here. Historic buildings expert Dr. Jonathan Clark highlights the importance of the find as the only surviving example of a stage where Shakespeare may have played. Mysterious Time Capsule 
For more than 200 years, the statue at the United States Military Academy in West Point, New York, kept a secret. Hidden in its marble base was a mysterious time capsule. Workers discovered it during recent restoration work. The capsule was hermetically sealed, and attempts to see its contents using X-rays were unsuccessful. It is believed that cadets hid the capsule in the monuments in 1828. Once discovered, current students made guesses about its contents. Is there a diary? A map? a table set, or maybe another, smaller time capsule. The Academy hosted an opening presentation this week, which was broadcast live on YouTube. Finally, the masked scientists carefully opened the capsule that was only sealed inside. Perhaps there was something there before, but over time it decomposed. The next day, in the laboratory, archaeologist Paul Hudson discovered six American silver coins and a medal in honor of the Erie Canal hidden in the sediment. These artifacts dated from 1795 to 1828, confirm and speculate speculation about the time when the capsule was hidden. The monument is dedicated to Tadeusz Kosciuszko, a Polish military engineer who fought in the Revolutionary War. The statue was removed for restoration in 2021, but the capsule was only discovered now. Its analysis continues. Scientists are trying to understand the origin of the mud and the purpose of creating this time capsule. As you can see, history is still full of secrets, and each new discovery helps us better understand past eras. Also, also, these finds and discoveries remind us of the greatness of ancient civilizations. Ancient aliens are real. At the first hearings in the Mexican parliament, journalist and ufologist Jamie Mawson already tried to convince of the authenticity of the mummy supposedly thousands of years old. His attempts were unsuccessful then, and parliamentarians recalled past incidents with mummies of Nazca Indians, which turned out to be fake. Humanoids, similar to characters from science fiction films, aroused distrust among the hearing participants. The ufologist referred to research from the National Autonomous University of Mexico, but did not provide convincing evidence of their extraterrestrial origin. At the next hearing, ufologist Masson invited anthropologist Roger Zuniga, who stated that there were no traces of human intervention in the formation of humanoids. He stressed that their origin remains unknown. Argentine surgeon Celestino Adolfo Pieto expressed the opinion that the humanoids could be an evolved version of modern humans, calling them our descendants. Do you believe in the reality of these mummies? Write your opinion in the comments under the video. It's really interesting to know how many people among my viewers believe in alien mummies. The Chinese are urinating on this statue. In China, there is a unique group of monuments designed to express contempt for the figure depicted on them. The national traitor Kangu, or Hui. This figure is famous for his betrayal in the 12th century of the great hero of China, Yue Fei, who fought against the nomads and contributed to the unification of the state. Kangu accused the military leader Yue Fei of stopping the persecution of the nomads and secretly executed him, thereby depriving the country of a national hero. In this in this regard, when the monument to Kangu was erected, he immediately became an object of hatred and contempt. This approach to monuments is rare in China, usually reserved for controversial historical figures. The monument is a statue of Kangu and his relatives kneeling in a pose of repentance. Previously, the Chinese practiced desecration of the monument by urinating on it, but the government introduced a ban on such actions, leaving only the option of spitting and cursing at the statue. Kangu has become a symbol of lies and betrayal in Chinese culture in contrast to Yue Fei, whose name is associated with heroism and devotion. An interesting fact is that in Chinese cuisine there is even a dish named after Kangu and his wife. These are elongated donuts that are fried in boiling oil, symbolizing their eternal punishment. This is an example of how China long preserves the memory of its heroes and traitors. Another interesting thing is that the Chinese can urinate and spit on the statue, but tourists should under no circumstances do this. Otherwise, you will immediately go to prison for desecrating the monument. Gilmerton Cave Gilmerton Cave in Scotland, considered one of the oldest cities in the country, has recently become the subject of scientific debate. Located in the Edinburgh suburb of Gilmerton, the cave was opened to the public just 20 years ago, but its true origins still raise questions. The cave, consisting of two quarters and eight rooms, was completely carved out of sandstone by hand. 
It was once believed that it served as a temple for the Druids and was closed by them to preserve the sanctity of the place. However, new data casts doubt on this version. Some researchers have suggested that the cave may have been used as an isolated pub, although the presence of several such establishments in the small village makes this theory unlikely. The complexity and quality of the sandstone work in the cave, as well as the presence of curved horn-shaped tables, indicate a period before the Christian era. Therefore, the dating of the construction of the cave presumably dates back to 500 BC to 500 AD, a period when druids may have lived in the region. Exploration of the cave continues, and the discovered hidden part of the bay may reveal even more secrets in the future. Scientists do not rule out that Gilmerton Cave may subsequently be recognized as a unique surviving sanctuary of an ancient culture, despite numerous mysteries and the lack of concrete evidence about its original purpose. Sheep Drone Chariot in northwestern China, near the famous Terracotta Army, archaeologists have discovered a sheep drone chariot that is about 2,000 years old. This find is a rare artifact, as similar chariots are mentioned in ancient Chinese texts. The remains were found in the western tomb of the mausoleum of Emperor Qin Shi Huangdi, located near the city of Shan, Shanxi province. The archaeologist who led the excavation said that the structure of the chariot was not preserved due to its long stay in the ground, but the remains of six sheep with devices for traction were discovered at the site. Sheep drone chariots are a rarity in Chinese history. The emergence of such vehicles is associated with the legend of Emperor Wu, Sima Yan, of the Western Jin Dynasty, who, according to legend, traveled on such a chariot around his palace. This legend gave rise to the Chinese phrase to seek luck in a sheep card, referring to the choice of a wife from a harem of 10,000 wives. The researcher also uncovered a four-wheeled wooden chariot with an umbrella, copper artifacts associated with chariots and horses, as well as iron tools and copper weapons. The First War in European History Reanalysis of more than 300 sets of skeletal remains, some 5,000 years old, excavated in Spain, has led scientists to believe that these people may have been victims of the earliest known war in European history. This assumption places the beginning of military conflicts in the region a thousand years earlier than previously known. The find was made in the late Neolithic funerary shelter of San Juan Antipotum Latinum in southwest Europe, discovered by chance in 1985. On an area of 20 square meters, a huge number of human remains were found, including 90 complete and 31 incomplete skeletons, as well as many bones. Research has shown that warfare during the Neolithic period was poorly understood. Previously, it was believed that the conflicts at the time were short-lived and involved about 20-30 people on each side. It was assumed that the first indigenous societies could not fight long wars. However, archaeologist Teresa Fernandez Craspo and her colleagues found many injuries in adolescence and adult males, which was uncommon at other Neolithic mass grave sites in Europe. This indicated the possible long battle lasting several months. The reasons for the conflict are unknown, but it is believed that it may have been a struggle for leadership between different cultural groups in the region. 200-year-old wine during excavations near the walls of the Kazan Kremlin, archaeologists from the Kalikov Institute of Archaeology of the Academy of Sciences of the Republic of Tatarstan in Russia discovered a wine cellar from the early 19th century. It contains 0.3-liter green glass bottles, sealed with wax stamps with the manufacturer's initials and year of manufacture. Most of the bottles were broken, but two remained intact, and one of them still contained liquid. Scientists have established that the bottle Bottles were produced in 1814-1815 at the Shuryadinska glass factory in the Igoryevsky district of the Razan province. It is assumed that the wine cellar belonged to the Pereskeva Patinska church and the wine was used for church ceremonies, in particular for communion. This archaeological find will be subjected to chemical analysis to determine the composition and properties of the ancient wine drink. $20 billion treasure ship the galleon San Jose, which sank on June 8, 1708, during a naval battle with an English squadron, became one of the most famous underwater finds. A gunpowder explosion occurred on board of the ship, which was carrying 600 people, leading to its destruction and subsequent sinking in the Caribbean Sea. 
Believed to be lost for centuries, the San Jose was discovered in 2015 by the Colombian Navy at a depth of about 700 meters. On board the ship are chests filled with gold, silver and emeralds valued at between $4 billion and $20 billion. The situation around the galleon's treasures is complicated by the fact that they are claimed by the American company Sea Search Armada, which claims to have found the wreck of the ship in 1981. The company through the court is demanding from the Colombian government half the value of the treasure, $10 billion. In response, the Colombian president turned to creating a public-private partnership to implement the treasure recovery project. Noah's Ark in Turkey there is a place in Turkey that many believe to be the final refuge of the legendary Noah's Ark after the Biblical Flood. Researchers working in this area are confident that they have found confirmation of this. According to the Bible, after the subsidence of the Flood that destroyed all sinners on Earth, Noah's Ark, on which he, his family and pairs of animals were, stopped in the mountains of Ararat. The dimensions of the Ark were enormous, about 134 by 22 by 13 meters. The Terra Pioneer Formation in Turkey, discovered in 1956, attracts attention because its outline resembles an ark. Despite various claims about the evidence found, many archaeologists have refuted this theory. A Turkish-American team of researchers analyzed rock and soil samples believed to contain remains of the ark. They claim that the finds indicate human activity in the area around 5300 BC, which coincides with the estimated time of the flood. However, the presence of traces of human activity does not prove the existence of a giant wooden ship or a catastrophic flood. Archaeological evidence does not support the existence of the global flood described in the Bible. Most likely, the theme of the Great Flood is a later version of the Mesopotamian flood story mentioned in the Epic of Gilgamesh. Some argue that a localized flood may have occurred in the Mediterranean and Black Sea around 7,500 years ago and provided the inspiration for these stories. But even this interpretation is disputed. So the search for Noah's Ark faces the same problems as the search for Atlantis. Both are based on trying to find evidence for something that has no basis outside of specific stories. Reliefs of Images of Gods in the city of Asna, Egypt, stands an ancient temple dedicated to the god Hnum and his family. Recent restoration work has revealed impressive reliefs, revealing images of the gods and starry skies of the ancient Egyptians. Over the past years, this temple, which was a key religious center during the Ptolemaic era, has attracted the attention of scientists. Since 2018, restoration work has been underway here, thanks to which a unique image was discovered on the roof of the temple, demonstrating ancient Egyptian Egyptian ideas about space. One of the most striking reliefs is the image of the sky goddess Nut. Her figure, curved in the shape of the sky, illustrates the myth of how she absorbs the sun every night in order to give birth to it anew the next day. This representation symbolizes the eternal rebirth and movement of the sun across the sky. An image of the god Thoth and the sun god Khmun Ra was also found, along with symbols such as snakes, birds and crocodiles with unusual hats, demonstrating the deep symbolism and mythology of the ancient Egyptians. These reliefs serve as a bridge between our past and present, recalling how people have always been fascinated by the skies and sought answers to their questions by looking at the stars. The controversial story of a person's disappearance do people believe in aliens or is it just a way to get attention? Some of the stories make you wonder. Take for example the story of Granger Taylor from the Canadian town of Duncan. Since childhood, he showed amazing talent for technology. He disassembled and assembled mechanisms and even built a car in his teens. No wonder his dream of a treehouse looked like a UFO. Granger was fascinated by space. From restoring a locomotive to building an airplane, Taylor did everything with his own hands. But the fun began when he announced that he had contacted aliens. One day, in November 1980, Taylor disappeared. He left only a letter to his parents. He stated that he was going on a space journey for 42 months. The police began the search, but a complicating factor was the storm that raged that night. 
In 1984, the travel period expired, but Granger never returned. Rumors said that he either left to explore other worlds or died due to the storm. Soon they discovered an explosion crater containing the remains and parts of a pickup truck. However, there were also contradictions in this case. For example, Taylor's friend claimed that the car was a different color. Since then, many have tried to unravel this mysterious story. Some believe Taylor was taken by aliens, others believe he was working on secret projects. But the truth remained unknown. It's incredible how many secrets and mysteries our history hides. Every artifact, every study reveals a new facet of the past. Light-skinned blue-eyed giants for centuries, there have been rumors about giant people who lived on Earth in the distant past. Bone finds around the world support these myths. One of the most mysterious places with such finds is Santa Catalina Island off the coast of California. Santa Catalina is a small, cozy island near Los Angeles, part of the Channel Islands archipelago. Its history begins with the settlement of the Gabrielina Indians about 7,000 years ago. After them, both Spaniards and Mexicans visited here until the island became part of the United States. The story of young Ralph Glidden, who moved to the island in 1896, deserves special attention. After finding an Indian skull, he became interested in searching for ancient relics. Growing up, Ralph conducted many archaeological excavations, finding over 800 graves and many artifacts. He sold these relics to museums and private collectors. The Catalina Island Museum, founded by Glidden, is known for its unique exhibits. Among them, the skeletons found by Glidden became especially popular, but the greatest resonance was caused by his application for the discovery of the remains of people 210-270 cm tall. According to him, they had a European appearance, blonde hair and blue eyes. One of the amazing finds was the skeleton of a girl surrounded by the remains of 64 children. According to Glidden, the remains of more than 3,000 people were discovered on the island. Most of them were tall, which was not typical for the Indians. In 1913, German board physician A. Furstenen discovered an 8-foot skeleton in Avalon Bay, along with artifacts including a stone with symbols. But when trying to extract it, the skeleton collapsed, leaving only part of the bones. The press actively responded to such reports. The Ogden Standard Examiner newspaper wrote about the Glidden's findings in 1929, claiming the existence of an ancient toll race on Catalina. In addition, it was said that on the nearby island of Santa Rosa, skeletons with double rows of teeth and six fingers and toes were discovered in 1959. Thurston also heard legends about an ancient race of giants on Catalina who lived before the arrival of Europeans. However, Glidden's sensational findings on Santa Catalina remain in question for science scientists from around the world. Most scientists believe that he was looking for funding for his research, and rumors said that the skeletons in his museum were only high-quality fakes. According to some sources, part of the giant skeletons was sent to the University of California and the Smithsonian Institution, where they disappeared into secret storage facilities. Archival photos allegedly depicting these skeletons are controversial. There is an opinion that they are fake, but researcher Al Marzulli claims their authenticity, noting the presence of a six-finger on one of the hands. In 1962, since an impending death, Glidden sold his collection for just $5,000. He passed away in 1967. Today, the question of who Ralph Glidden was, a master of hoaxes, or the discoverer of mysterious civilization, remains open. Unfortunately, no convincing scientific evidence has been found for the existence of giants on Earth along with humanity. Cannonballs from Dracula's Army Count Dracula is known to many as a bloodthirsty vampire who hunts his victims with the help of supernatural abilities and sharp fangs. However, the real person behind this name, Vlad the Impaler, was far from the mythical image created by Bram Stoker. Ironically, the real Vlad preferred to use cannonballs rather than fangs. Recent excavations in the town of Swishto, Bulgaria, have uncovered cannonballs that may have belonged to Prince Vlad III, also known as Vlad the Impaler. This ruler who became the prototype of the legendary Dracula was known for his brutal method of warfare, especially against the Ottoman Turks. A particularly interesting moment in his military career was the conquest of Zishto Fortress in Swishto. Recent archaeological finds of cannonballs likely indicate that these cannonballs were used by Vlad during this siege. These cannonballs were designed to fire culverins, early cannons used in the 15th and 16th centuries. Vlad the Impaler tried to retake territory captured by 
by the Turks, who had controlled the region since Roman times. After successfully conquering the Zishto fortress, Vlad turned it into his residence. Although artillery was an important part of his siege tactics, his sinister reputation stems from his preference for executing his enemies by impaling them. Thousand-Year-Old Sandals in Granada, southern Spain, archaeologists have made an amazing discovery – ancient sandals and baskets dating back to the Mesolithic era. The sandals are estimated to be 6,200 years old, while the basket is estimated to be an impressive 9,500 years old. The age of the baskets came as a surprise to archaeologists. It was previously believed that basket weaving was a Neolithic technology, but it is now clear that this scale was mastered by hunter-gatherers much earlier earlier. Ancient Election Slogans In ancient Pompeii, archaeologists have discovered unique election slogans dating back more than 2,000 years. These inscriptions may have belonged to Aulus Rastius Verus, who was competing for the post of Aedile, a position responsible for the maintenance of city buildings. Unusually, the slogans were located inside the house and not outside, as was customary in those days. Scholars have suggested that this may indicate that Verus hosted dinners at his home to bribe voters, with the slogan serving as part of the decor and a reminder of his candidacy. The finding speaks to how important it was for candidates to gain the trust of citizens, even if this required resorting to bribery methods. Given that the house of Aulus Rastius Verus was one of the most luxurious in Pompeii and he had close ties to the imperial dynasty, scholars believe that he actually became an aedile. Pot of coins in the fireplace this remarkable discovery, of course, was a real breakthrough in the study of Scottish history and, in particular, the history of the MacDonald clan. Coins not only served as a means of payment of that era, but were also a symbol of the wealth and status of their owner. Researchers cannot say with certainty that the treasure belonged to Alice Daruad MacLean MacDonald, but a large amount of evidence hints at this. The tragic story of the Glencoe massacre is one of the darkest periods in Scottish history, and these coins may be one of the last evidence of the terrible tragedy. The treasure found in the summer house speaks of the importance and status of its owners. The remains of expensive ceramics and other luxury items indicate the high social status and well-being of the inhabitants of this house. These artifacts provide a unique opportunity to see the everyday life of the nobility of that time, allowing the researchers to understand how the clan leaders and their immediate circle lived and what they did. Ron Prayer in the silent reaches of Israel, on the site of an ancient monastery near Jerusalem, archaeologists have discovered something unusual – a stone block that contains an ancient text that is about one and a half thousand years old. This artifact contains a passage from Psalm 86 known as the Prayer of David. Surprisingly, the text was in ancient Greek, the language that was the standard for writing the New Testament at that time. Visually, this stone stood out with a carved cross, but what surprised scientists even more more was that the prayer was inaccurate. Where it should have been, Hear me, Lord, for I am faithful to you, it was written, Jesus Christ, protect me, for I am poor and in need. Most likely, the author made a mistake due to his imperfection in Greek, preferring his native Semitic. The site of the discovery, a monastery in Hyrcania, was built on the ruins of a fortress built 2,100 years ago by the Hasmonean dynasty. Under the rule of the Byzantine Empire, the monastery flourished, continuing its life, even after the advent of the Rashidun Caliphate. Among other valuable finds, it is worth noting a gold ring with turquoise, probably intended for a child. The ring is decorated with the Arabic inscription Mashala. The oldest evidence of cannibalism in Goff's Cave, located in southeast England, archaeologists from Natural History Museum in London found ancient traces of cannibalism. This is evidenced by 15,000-year-old remains of human bones with cuts and teeth marks. As scientists point out, this act of cannibalism may have been part of a funeral ritual and not a forced measure. It was a cultural practice common among the Magdalenian culture in the late Paleolithic. This culture was one of the main ones in Europe approximately between 23 and 14 
14,000 years ago. In contrast, the other dominant culture of the time, the Epigravetian, practiced funerary rites that are more familiar to us. As evidence of the symbolic nature of Magdalenian cannibalism, scientists cite finds such as decorative items made from human bones, including a cup carved from a skull and an engraved bone. Book of Kells the Book of Kells is a medieval manuscript housed in the Trinity College Library and is one of the Dublin's main attractions. This manuscript contains the four Gospels in Latin and canon tables written on parchment. The book measures 33 by 25 centimeters and consists of 340 pages. It was created at the end of the 8th beginning of the 9th century, and the research has shown that it had four illustrators. The peculiarity of the manuscript is that each letter has its own unique design, color, and meaning like a secret code that has yet to be deciphered. The book takes its name from Kells Abbey, where it was preserved from the Vikings in 814. It is believed that work on it began during the life of St. Columba and continued for two centuries after his death. Historians offer several versions of the origin of this manuscript. According to one of them, it was created on the island of Iona and later transported to Kells Abbey. Another version says that writing began on Iona but was completed in Kells. There are suggestions that the manuscript was created in England or even Scotland. Despite the variety of theories, the Book of Kells remains one of the most mysterious and magnificent works of art of the Middle Ages. New Secrets of the St. Balak Plate the ancient stone slab of St. Balak, 4,000 years old, has been actively studied by scientists since its discovery in 2014 in a French mount. In 2021, it received the status of the oldest map of Europe. Researchers believe the slab may contain clues to the treasure based on the designs and symbols carved into it. This unique slate artifact was first found in Finisterre, western France in 1900. But the mystery of the slab remained unsolved and it lay in the castle for more than a century until scientists began studying it again. The slab, measuring 2 by 1.5 meters, according to experts, is a map of the Britain region. Rivers, mountains, and other natural features are engraved on it. Interestingly, the depressions on the slab may indicate ancient settlements of burial mounds. When comparing the drawings with modern maps of Brittany, an astonishing 80% agreement was found. Research into this ancient map continues. It covers an area of 30 by 21 kilometers, and it may take scientists up to 15 years years to fully study it. Excavations near the site of the slab have already yielded new fragments used in the construction of ancient tombs. Remains of the last crocodile in Europe Crocodiles migrated to Europe from Africa, but climate change led to their extinction. In the province of Granada, Spain, paleontologists have found a crocodile tooth that is approximately 4.5 million years old. This instance was one of the last in Europe. It is believed that about 6.2 million years ago, crocodiles crossed the dry Mediterranean Sea, crossing from Africa to Europe. Excavation at the site began in the 2000s. During this time, over 2,000 fossils were discovered here, including the remains of the found tooth, scientists say, belong to a crocodile close to modern African Nile crocodiles. The girl who discovered ancient dragons to the world Born in 1799 in Lyme Regis, Dorset, Britain, Mary Annin was an ordinary girl, but her discoveries later puzzled scientists. Mary's father, a carpenter by profession, was fond of finding fossils and passed this hobby on to his children. After his death, 10-year-old Mary took over the family business of selling fossils, learning not only to read and write, but also to identify the types of specimens found. In 1811, Mary's brother found the skull of an ichthyosaur that was mistakenly found thought to be a crocodile. Mary later found the remains of this creature which lived about 200 million years ago. In 1823, she discovered a plesiosaur, an ancient marine reptile. However, women were rarely recognized in the world of science at that time. Mary faced discrimination and did not always receive credit for her work. Although her results were used by many researchers, her name was rarely mentioned. However, she has won the respect of some scientists. Henry de la Beach, for example, produced postcards of her finds and gave her the profits from their sale. Having died at the age of 47, Mary was recognized by the Royal Society as one of the 10 women who made the greatest contribution to science. In 2020, the film Ammonite was released, telling the story of Anning's life, starring Kate Winslet and Saoirse Ronan. This be lenses. A favorite pastime of archaeologists and historians is playing what if. 
Many moments from the past, even seemingly insignificant ones, could radically change the course of human history. For example, what if the so-called Visby lenses fell into the hands of an early medieval scientist and began the study of optics in Europe 500 years earlier? The Visby lenses are a collection of high-quality optical lenses found on the Swedish island of Gotland in 1999. They date back to the 11th and 12th centuries and are made of quartz. Some lenses show signs of alteration, probably for mounting in the silver frames that make them so recognizable. These lenses are reminiscent of the reading stones or Abbas ibn Furnas. This suggests that the lenses were produced in the Byzantine or Islamic empires, then brought to Scandinavia and remade to suit local tastes. Lenses of this type could be used as magnifying glasses for reading or for viewing the details of objects. They could also serve as decoration. Interestingly, when compared with modern lenses, the image quality of antique lenses is almost as good. However, the origin of the lenses remains a mystery. The appearance and disappearance of these lenses in the Scandinavian world raises questions. Did they buy the first lenses or receive them as trophies? Did an Islamic or Byzantine artisan come to Gotland? Or was it the creation of a brilliant inventor from Gotland? Scotland. Regardless of the origin of the lenses, the question can be asked. What if they had fallen into the hands of the inventor who created the telescope 500 years before Galileo? What if Vikings could explore our solar system? What if the science of optics had begun to develop 500 years earlier? Runestone from Ryaka an ancient runic inscription on a stone found in southern Sweden and Edishuk is the longest in the world. Many experts believe that this is an epitaph in memory of the warrior Vamuda, created by his father. However, Swedish scientists who studied the text concluded that the stone also reflects fear of the coming climate crisis, in particular global cooling. Researchers suggest that the text refers to the consequences of the cold snap of 535-536, which caused famine, mass migrations and conflict. This crisis could have caused the Scandinavian population to huff. The text also mentions battles under the reign of Theodoric, possibly referring to Theodoric the Great. However, scientists believe that there may be an additional subtext, the struggle between light and darkness, life and death. According to archaeology professor Bo Gressland, the text can record terrible natural phenomena, such as a solar or an eclipse. They could provoke fear of the approach of a thimble winter, the apocalyptic winter from Norse mythology. Varna Gold Treasure the oldest processed gold was found not in Egypt or among the ancient Sumerians, but in Bulgaria, near Varna. Some researchers consider the Varna culture to be the first European civilization. Radiocarbon dating also confirmed the antiquity of this gold. It was dated to the 5th millennium BC. Gold was accidentally discovered in the 1970s by excavator operator Raika Marinov, who was later even awarded. Research at the site continues and approximately 300 graves have been discovered so far. Gold finds from Varna indicate extensive trade relations of the ancient Varna culture, which may have exported rock salt. Interestingly, shells of the mollusk Spondylus were found in the graves, which could have served as money. Notable finds include a golden boomerang, believed to be an Australian invention, and gold-plated pottery. The two golden bulls are striking in the ratio, reminiscent of the golden ratio and are associated with the principles of constructing the Cheops pyramid. Scientists also highlight the similarity with the English Stonehenge. There are 56 protrusions on the amulet in the form of a golden bull. The same number of round holes were found in Stonehenge. Fascinating coincidence of history, isn't it? The golden treasures of Lorna number more than 3,000 artifacts, weighing a total of 6.5 kilograms, the bulk of which were found in three special graves, including grave number 43, with the remains of a possible ruler. This man was impressively tall for his time, 1.72 meters. Buried next to it are a variety of gold objects, appliques, rings, necklaces, objects that could be symbolic images as well as weapons and tools with gold details. In addition, the grave contained many objects made of copper and other materials such as stone, flint and shells. Of particular note is a bracelet made of gold cylinders, considered the most ancient of gold times, and grave number 36, where over 850 gold artifacts were discovered. These items confirm the burial of a person of royal family. The Story of a Condemned Man the justice system is not without flaws. Sometimes innocent people end up behind bars. However, the story of Will Purvis is an example that miracles do happen. In 1893, in Mississippi, Will was accused of killing a neighbor due to a sudden quarrel. 
Purvis confirmed the existence of a conflict between them, but categorically denied murder. He had no defense witnesses. The jury sentenced him to death. When he was taken out of court, he exclaimed, I will outlive you all. It seemed like empty words back then. However, when he was led to execution in 1894, something incredible happened. The noose did not block his breathing and the rope came undone. The crowd decided that this was a sign from above. The sheriff, sensing the tense situation, took Will back to prison. Despite appeals, the verdict remained in force. Wolf's friends did not leave him. They organized an escape. The change in power and public support did their job. Will was offered life imprisonment instead of the death penalty if he surrendered. Purvis agreed and later the public began to put pressure on the governor so that Will would be completely released from responsibility due to the lack of evidence of his guilt. The governor had to agree. As the years passed, the truth came to light. On his deathbed, a certain Joseph Beard, a admitted that he was the killer, not Purvis. Will, his name was clear due to many circumstances, passed away on October 13, 1938, just a few days after the death of the last of the jurors who sentenced him to death. What do you think? Was the incident on the scaffold a miracle or a sign? Leave your comments under the video. Stelly of Nerepta the long slavery of the Jews to the Egyptians and their subsequent exit from Egypt constitute one of the most confusing chapters in the history of ancient Egypt. Although archaeological evidence for this event is limited, each find is of great significance. There is an opinion that there is no evidence of the presence of Jews in Egypt at the time of the Exodus, but this is not true. The most famous piece of evidence is the Stela of Pharaoh Merenipta, discovered at Thebes in 1896. It relates to Merenipta's military achievements and contains the oldest mention of Israel. The Stela defines Israel not as a state, but as a people at war with Egypt. This fact is interesting because Mer Merenipta was a descendant of Ramses II, a possible pharaoh from the book of Exodus. According to the Bible, the Exodus of the Jews marked the beginning of the formation of Jewish statehood. Merenipta may have witnessed the emergence of Egyptian dominance in the region, which subsequently weakened under Ramses VI. During this period, new states were formed, mainly by migrants from southern Italy, the Aegean Sea, and western Anatolia. The mention of Israel may confirm the biblical version of the return of the Israelites to their lands from the South. Meteorite enriches Indonesian undertaker. A resident of Kolang, Indonesia, Josh Hatagalang, was surprised when a meteorite older than 4.5 billion years and weighing 2.1 kilograms fell directly onto his veranda, breaking through the roof. This unique carbonaceous chondrite is valued at $1.7 million. After this unexpected incident, Joshua sold the rare space rock to a collector, making the profit equal to 30 years of income for an undertaker. When the man discovered this stone, it was warm, and it immediately seemed to him that it could be a meteorite. Joshua plans to use a part of the money to build a church and hopes that this meteorite is a sign that his dream of having a daughter will soon come true. After this event, many came to him to see the cost cosmic miracle. Subsequently, three more fragments of the meteorite were found, which were named Kohling. The meteorite was later sold in the United States to a doctor collector from Indianapolis. Globster Mermaid the masses of unrecognizable organic matter that occasionally wash up on beaches are called globsters. These may be the remains of sea creatures, but without clearly defined features, they are difficult to identify. Another such object found in Papua New Guinea quickly became an internet sensation. It is called a mermaid or sea monster. The mysterious globster was discovered on Simberi Island, a small volcanic island in Papua New Guinea. The find attracted a lot of attention because of its strange shape. It had a tail, but many other parts were missing. Scientists are still trying to understand what it is. A whale, a dolphin, a dugong, a shark, or a mermaid. Photos of this mystical creature quickly went viral on social networks. Jens Curry from the Pacific Whale Foundation believes it could be a sea cow found off the island's coast. On the other hand, Sasha Hooker from the University of St. Andrews in Scotland believes that it was a cetacean. The exact the exact origins of the globster will likely remain a mystery because local people buried it and DNA analysis is not possible. Who do you think it could be? Jewelry making mold. 
Archaeologists in Switzerland have discovered a unique ancient mold for casting jewelry with Christian symbols, confirming its use to create early Christian decorative objects. According to Swiss Info, this small mold measures just 9 by 8.5 by 3 centimeters and could be used to create up to seven different pieces of jewelry – necklaces, earrings, and a cross. Photographs of the mold, which was fixed during casting, show a detailed cross with an image of Christ, topped with a crown. Preliminary research dates this artifact to the 9th 10th century. Only three similar examples are known in Switzerland. After the discovery of the mold, work at the site continued, revealing a small area of artisan from the Middle Ages. The site where excavations are being carried out previously served as a prison. Archaeologists plan to continue their work, which gives hope for new, interesting finds. Name of Jesus Christ While studying the remains of a man from Sudan, scientists at the University of Warsaw discovered a religious tattoo with a Christian symbol. These remains were found near the Ghazali Monastery, dating back to the Middle Ages. On the leg of the deceased, who passed away about 1,300 years ago, a tattoo was discovered depicting a chrisma, a monogram of the name of Jesus Christ created from the Greek letters chi and rho. In addition, the alpha and omega symbols were depicted nearby. This symbol first appeared in 300 24 AD during the reign of Emperor Constantine. Alpha and Omega are the beginning and ending letters of the Greek alphabet, symbolizing the idea of God as the beginning and end of everything. An interesting fact is that the tattoo is located on the right leg because since it is there, according to scientists, that a nail could have been nailed during the veneration of Christ. This religious marking indicates the man's Christian faith. However, it is not established whether he was a monk from the Ghazali monastery since his remains were found in a nearby cemetery reserved for local residents. According to the analysis, he was 35-50 years old at the time of death. At that time, the region known as Nubia included parts of modern Egypt and Sudan, and Christianity was the main religion. Despite the fact that the remains were found seven years ago, the unique tattoo was only recently discovered and is only the second known case of tattooing in medieval Nubia. Tomb in Tel Aviv during construction in Palmakim Park near Tel Aviv, an ancient tomb with many artifacts was found. The Israel Antiquities Authority published a video showing clay vessels, bronze arrowheads, and spearheads. These ritual offerings are approximately 3,300 years old, dating back to the time of Ramses II. Archaeologist David Gelman suggests that the people buried with weapons may have been warriors or ship guards. Gelman considers the find surprising, since the cave remained untouched for thousands of years. This is reminiscent of footage from a movie about Indiana Jones, underground objects are preserved in their original form, as if ancient people left them yesterday. Decorated Roman Sandal the recent archaeological breakthrough in the Roman town of Lucas Asturum in Spain has become a real sensation. At this picturesque site, which served as an important administrative center between the 1st and 4th centuries, a remarkably preserved 2,000-year-old Roman sandal was discovered. During the excavations, scientists found an ancient well in which the lost shoes were found. In order to carefully remove it, archaeologists used a special system. These shoes were special. They had unique patterns in the form of circles, ovals, and falcon figures. It is noteworthy that among all the known Roman sandals in Spain, only this one is decorated. The silt at the bottom of the well protected it from time, creating conditions that prevented destruction. In addition to the sandal, many other items were found in the well. A wooden lead, jugs, seeds, shellfish, and metal objects. At the moment, the sandal is under guard in the refrigerator until restoration work is completed. This Roman sandal is a stunning moment in history, providing a glimpse into the creativity and daily life of the ancient Romans. Rotating Egyptian Statue there are rumors that an ancient Egyptian statue discovered in the museum mystically rotates on its pedestal at night. And for a long time, it was believed that it was cursed. In fact, everything was much simpler. Researchers said they have evidence of external vibration that rotated the 25-centimeter statue. 
Museum Egyptologist Campbell Price suggested the museum may have been afflicted by an ancient curse. However, Professor Brian Cox gave a more realistic explanation, believing that it is the differential friction between the statue's stone and the glass shelf that causes vibration, causing the statue to rotate. Expert Steve Gosling installed vibration sensors under the cabinet and detected vibrations caused by passersby and traffic on a busy road nearby. This phenomenon could attract new tourists to the museum to learn more about about ancient Egypt. The spinning days of the Napsanu statue are over, with a membrane now attached to the base of the statue and other exhibits to prevent future movement. Angelic Glow of the Wounded the Battle of Shiloh was one of the largest engagements of the American Civil War taking place on April 6, 7, 1862 in Tennessee. This conflict amazed the doctors of that time with its consequences. After the surprise attack, Confederate troops began to withdraw. The medical personnel who arrived on the battlefield were not prepared for the huge number of casualties. There were about 16,000 of them. It was impossible to quickly help everyone and many of the wounded remained lying on the cold, wet ground for days. Many doctors noticed that at night, the wounds of some soldiers began to emit a faint bluish-green light. Surprisingly, those who had this glow had wounds that healed faster and the remaining scars were less pronounced. This phenomenon was called angelic glow. Many years later, two students, Bill Martin and John Curtis, became interested in this phenomena. Inspired by the idea that bacteria could be the cause of the glow, Bill decided to investigate this hypothesis. According to his hypothesis, the bacterium Potoraptus luminescence could cause the luminous effect. Under the cold and wet conditions that the soldiers were exposed to, this bacterium was able to survive and thrive, eliminating the soldiers' wounds. This same bacterium also kills other pathogens, which helps speed healing. The young researchers presented their findings at the 2001 Intel Science Fair and won first place. Thus, the folklore myth about the angelic glow gained scientific justification, demonstrating that miracles can have a completely rational explanation. With each new discovery, we blur the line between past and present, reminding us that history is a living timeline in which each of us plays an important role. Support this video with your like and comment. See you in the next episodes. Thanks for your views. Bye, everyone! one.